how to DJ with Bluetooth. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and I'm gonna show you how to free yourself from all of these annoying wires. So the problem with DJing with Bluetooth is something called latency. So this is a slight delay between when you press buttons and do mixes to when the audio actually reaches the Bluetooth speaker. Some new advanced Bluetooth speakers have very little to no latency, but most speakers do. So I'm gonna show you how to use visual cues and some mixing tricks and how to take advantage of the sync button so that if you're at a party or even if you're riding in someone's car and you want a DJ, you could do it without the wires. So stay tuned to this video. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna go over is visual cues. Since we're dealing with latency and we can't use our ears to hear the different beats and line them up, we're gonna use our eyes. So in DJ Pro, they give you a beautiful color-coded view of the waveforms. And by using these waveforms, once you know what they mean, you'll know exactly what's gonna happen in the song. The way the visual cues work is actually very easy on DJ Pro and also in other softwares like Serato or Virtual DJ, they have the waveforms. So the only thing you have to really know is if the waveform is thinner and smaller, that means the sound is gonna be thinner and smaller. Think vocals, hi-hats, and intros. And then where it gets bigger, that's where the boom, 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 and the bass is. So in EDM music, that's where the drop will be. And then hip hop music also has different types of beat drops, but it'll be easy to know where the drop is. So it, on this song that I have loaded in the left deck, if you look at how it starts, it's very thin and it's like that lightish blue. So here is what it sounds like. Just like a nice intro with not a lot of bass. And now if you go over here to the drop, you see over here, there's the drop. There's this quiet noise and that adds tension right before the drop. So check this out. So that's how you could use visual cues when you're DJing with Bluetooth so that you don't play two drops at the same time or have too much bass playing at the same time. Another thing is with the beats and bars. So the yellow marker, it indicates, indicates the beginning of a bar. So this is bar one where the yellow marker is and then these spaces between it are beats. So one easy way to mix without using headphones or dealing with the latency of Bluetooth is just play, play the beginning of a new bar at the end of a, of a bar or a beat on the other song so that it's lined up. So I hope this helps you guys know how to see what the music sounds like. So not hear what it sounds like, but see what it's gonna sound like. And I'm in the next tip, I'm gonna show you how to use the sync button to mix perfectly. Big debate in the DJ community that using the sync button isn't real DJing or real DJs don't use the sync button, but I think that is ridiculous and it's a tool that's there, so why not take advantage of it? And I have other videos that I'll leave links to that show you how to beat match manually. So if you know you could do it, then it doesn't make sense to be trying to beat match when there's latency and you're using Bluetooth. So I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what the sync button does and how to use it correctly. So when you press the sync button one time, it's gonna match the BPM to the song on the other deck. So instead of using the BPM sliders, which is hard to use on the iPad and your phone because it's, it's, it's really hard to get, get it precise. 
So if you want the two songs to have the same BPM right away, just press it once. And now the BPMs are, are in sync with each other. They're the same number and then it makes it possible to match the beats. And then if you press the sync button again, it's going to line up the it's going to line actually line up the beats. So the yellow lines are going to be together. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we got two songs playing. You press sync and now they are blended together perfectly because the beats and the bars are together. So when you're DJing with Bluetooth and you want to mix a song in, what you what you can do is you play one song and then have the other song at, at the intro part or a part where you know by using the visual cues that I taught you talk to you about where one song will have heavy music and bass and then the other track will have um, you know just some vocals or some light intro type of music and then you, once they're sunk together you could just slide the crossfader over to the next song and that's just one of many transitions that you could still do with Bluetooth. Another great transition that I always use as my go-to when I'm DJing with Bluetooth is doing the echo out. So it, to do this transition, you just wait for a good part of the song and then you press echo on and you either lower the crossfader, you could press pause, or you could just move the crossfader over. I think I said crossfader, I meant the volume. So you could just turn the volume off and then that it'll still have an echo. So there'll be no silence and it will have like a dramatic effect. And then you could just play the next song. So I'll show you really quick. Oh wait, I had the echo on, let's start, no echo. So that's a really great transition to use with Bluetooth because you don't have to use beat matching or match any beats together at all. Now another one is you just wait for one song to end and then you press play on a good part of the next song, like, like a part that everyone will know. That's a very good transition that doesn't take any beat matching and you don't have to use any um, audio cues. You could just look at your screen and be, oh, this song's gonna end, let me play the next one. So this is what it sounds like real quick. This song ends. And you just play the next one. DJing doesn't have to be complicated or you don't have to do all these crazy things as long as you're playing music that people like at the right time. So that transition is perfectly fine. Another transition that you could do, which is one of my favorites, is you could do the backspin. This was um, made popular, I believe, in uh, in Europe, uh, they use it a lot. So what you're gonna do when you wanna do the transition is you're gonna spin the record back as fast as you can and then play the next song. So it's gonna add like a type of noise and it's really fun to do. So I'm gonna show you first with spinning the jog wheel or the record on the screen. So it's more fun if you do it on classic mode because they have these big records. So I'll show you. So you, on the next song, you have the part where you're gonna start it already, and then when you feel like doing the backspin, you do the backspin. And also make sure that you move the crossfader or you lower the volume after you do this, because the, it's like a rubber band like as it spins and then gravity will bring it back They did really good with the physics on the job wheels on this app So make sure that it's not playing anymore. I'm gonna show you what happens if you still have to play 
so we have sync off. So it's gonna keep playing and it's gonna be offbeat. So just make sure if you do the backspin, you turn the volume off after that. All right, and um, real quick, another great transition you could use when you're DJing with Bluetooth is you could do what, um, like a filter, filter out, I guess it would be called. So over here, you have high pass and low pass filter. So what the high pass filter does is it takes out all the bass and it only leaves the highs. It's, it's the same thing as if you were just gonna go over here and adjust. So you're just gonna have the highs. So the, the lows are gonna be um, taken away and you'll just hear the highs. And it adds like a whoosh, whoosh, like a sweeping effect, which is also really cool and it makes it a cool sound. So using our visual cues with these two songs, if you look at the waveforms, I think we can get a better view of the waveforms like this. If you look at the waveforms, this kind of looks like it's doing a whoosh, like, like a funnel, it's going from big to small. So we found the part in the next song over here where it looks like it looks like a funnel too. So what we're gonna do is when this part gets smaller into the funnel, we're gonna put on the low pass filter and then and then it's gonna whoosh like magic into the next song. So so check this out. And this is one of my favorite transitions. Um, I actually learned it from a YouTube video, and I was like, wow, I never thought about doing that, and it works so perfectly. And the, the last transition I'm gonna give you, and some people might not even say that this is a transition at all, is by using a, a sample. So I taught you guys how to make, make your own samples, or DJ Pro gives you like hundreds of built-in samples that you could use. So to do this transition, we're gonna use a sample, and then as the sample noise is playing, we're gonna blend it into the next song. So you could use it with like the siren, or you could use it with the air horn. I'm gonna use it with one of my own samples. So we're gonna stop this song. And you could find better ways to do that. That wasn't that great, but there's an endless possibility. I'll show you what it sounds like with the air horn. And you see the air horn had that resonance and it kept playing and then you were in the next song. So I hope this helped you guys um, free yourself from all the wires and still have fun DJing. Now, it, there's nothing, uh, nothing compares to actually being able to uh, scratch and mix and having that exact timing with the music. But don't let that limit you to the gigs that you could play, or if, if you're riding in someone's car and they're like, oh, you're a DJ, play something. Don't be like, oh, I gotta plug it in, I gotta have my headphones, I gotta have this and that. No, you could just start playing songs and you could DJ a full set with using Bluetooth and the visual cues and these great transitions that I showed you. So let me know in the comments if you use any of this and what your thoughts on DJ with Bluetooth is. Also subscribe to the channel and give this a like and that's what makes this all possible. Thank you guys.